I'm not following you, by the way. Sorry? <laughs> no, I'm just saying, like, I saw you in the Metro, so. And now I'm seeing you now, so I'm just, thought you should know I'm not following you. I just. I mean, you caught me, like, I come here every Wednesday, so you caught me on a good day. I come to watch, like, I feel like I'm too far, you can't even hear me. Can you hear me well? This is yeah. better. <laughs> yeah, so it's like I come here to watch the little boats, you know? Like the waves, the little ripples, something soothing about it, you know? I guess you can say that. Yeah. Um, I have this theory, actually. Do you want to hear it? Mm-hmm. Mm, yeah, yeah, you would like to hear it? I, I don't need to ruin your picture, but I thought we should capture this moment. Um, so, yeah, I have this theory, and I'd really like to share it with you. You seem like someone who'd be very receptive to it. Um, so it's like... These people are out in their, in, in their boats, right? The people that I'm watching, like when I come here. And I'm, I'm looking at them, and they're out in their boats in this, ma in this like very vast area, right? And you'd imagine that they'd be scared being out all alone in the water, right? With like all this crazy stuff underneath. You know what I'm saying? Like you'd imagine that they'd be scared, right? Mm -hmm. Right? But what really is that is that it's just the unknown, you know? And... Uh, Okay, yeah. so what I'm saying is that they should be afraid being out in the middle of the water, right, all by themselves, but they're not. And it's like, why aren't you afraid being out in the middle of the ocean all by yourself? If, yeah. And the reason why is because I'm thinking that it's like the cradling of the water, of the boat by the water, it very much like subconsciously reminds you of what it's like to be cradled in the crib by your mother, you know? And like what's very much the unknown is actually very soothing, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Are you catching my drift? <sighs> <laughs> well, how do you explain people who feel seasick? Well, I mean, obviously my theory has some flaws in it. There's, it's not, like, fully fleshed out yet. Can't say I agree with you. No? Why is that? Of course, you may say there's an exception to every rule, but unlike those people you were referring to, I'm actually deathly afraid of the ocean. Oh, is that so? I find nothing soothing <laughs> about being on a man-made machine on top of the, as you say, unknown. Yeah. As much as I enjoy watching it, I take no pleasure in taking part in it. No, is that something you do often? What do you mean? Like watching and not taking part? Of course not. No? And even if I did, I don't see the harm in that. Uh, One can enjoy from afar just as someone could closely. Mm -hmm. That's the magic and visual perception. Being yeah. able to appreciate a view. Yeah. All right, imagine. <laughs> okay. Do you really think the view inside, from down inside a valley, is as breathtaking as that from the outside, looking at the entire landscape? Wasn't it Aristotle who said the whole is better than the sum of its parts? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Aristotle, I don't know that. That's some <laughs> fancy stuff. What I do fancy, know though, okay. <laughs> yeah, fancy, fancy. You're Mrs. <laughs> fancy Pants, aren't you? Eh? So what I was saying, Fancy Pants, is that <laughs> that you're only looking at is that you're seeing it only from a visual perspective. But what about to incorporate all the senses, to incorporate touch, to incorporate seeing, to incorporate smelling, to incorporate taste, to incorporate hearing the valley, hearing the creek, you know, to actually hear the water running, you know? It's like, it's like the way I see it, it's like you're al almost on this train, you're looking at the world through the glass, you're just perceiving it stop by stop by stop instead of actually getting out and making that what, what, once, what was once just a two-dimensional image into like a three-dimensional image, you know what I'm saying? And like taking that space and making it real. And I think like stepping out of the train, it's kind of like stepping out of your comfort zone, like stepping into the valley is stepping out of your comfort zone, you know what I mean? Like towards the unknown. I mean like, I personally think that a lot of people who are content watching but not really participating, aren't really living to their full potential, you know, they're like, right. <laughs> no, I'm not like, I'm not insinuating anything by saying that. I'm just saying like, I mean, you're so, people, not you, like people are so satisfied <laughs> with like, 
with seeing and not actually participating and it's like what are they afraid of? They're afraid of getting hurt or like they're afraid of the unknown? Let me put it in like a visual way. Were you the kind of kid who would go out and play and be very involved and participate? Or would you sit back from a distance and watch? You know what I mean? Like which kind of kid were you? That's what I'm asking. You know? What do you do for a living? What do I do? Yeah, for a living, like what's your work? Don't you find that a little bit irrelevant seeing as you just did this whole psychoanalysis of me and uncovered my deepest secrets? I don't know, what do you, psychoanalysis? <laughs> I don't know about that. I was making generalizations, but I guess they were kind of spot on, right? I didn't say that. Yeah, but you kind of did. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I work out, you know? <laughs> Seriously? After all of that, that's what you come up with? I'm saying like if we were on a boat together and something was to go wrong, because I work out, I'd be able to protect you. <laughs> okay, thank you. I'm sure if I was on the boat with you on top of the unknown, I'd be so reassured. You would. <laughs> you would. I actually have to get going. I'm meeting someone, but it was very nice to meet you. I'm Ryan. Julie. Julie. It's nice to meet you, Julie. Uh, is that it? That's it.